Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I'm here today to show you examples when Inky gets it wrong. That's right, for all the ingredient list warriors out there that read an ingredient list and instantly assume ingredients are either unsafe or unnatural, this video is all about showing you how raw material suppliers have gotten really clever to create fully naturally derived ingredients with sometimes chemical or other not nice sounding inky names. The point is we can't just look at an inky list and assume an ingredient is not natural or not safe. Remember that all ingredients that are permitted for use in cosmetic products are considered safe when used within their regulatory limits. And this video is going to show you how we can no longer make assumptions based on an inky name either. Let's start with perhaps the most controversial and that is ethoxylation. We now have some clever material suppliers creating bioethylene oxide. Here's an example from Solvay. So they use sugar cane and they extract sugar from the sugar cane, then ferment it and distill it to produce ethanol. They then oxygenate this to become ethylene and this is bioethylene oxide. What's also great about this process is they create energy from the extraction process. So it's a completely carbon neutral sourcing of ethoxylation. They then mix natural laurel alcohols obtained from RSPO certified palm oils and use the bioethylene oxide to ethoxylate it to produce laureth 2 which they then sulfate to produce sodium laureth sulfate. The end material is chemically identical to a material that would otherwise be sourced from petroleum sources. What this means is we have a 100% carbon neutral process as well as 100% renewable process. It's also 100% natural, but the inky name is sodium laureth sulfate. So if you were just looking at the inky list on a product, you really can't determine how natural or not that material is. But Solvay haven't finished there. They've got some other great materials using clever processing techniques that are all 100% natural origin, including sodium laurel sulfate, sodium C1218 alcohol sulfate, laureth 6, laureth 9, PEG40 castor oil, and even your polysorbate 20 and polysorbate 80. In addition, the EPA has listed this source of ethoxylation as a safer choice where you can save 30% in non-renewable carbon and up to 20% in carbon dioxide emissions. So regardless of inky, that is a naturally derived and renewable source of a carbon-based material that we should not be discluding just because of its inky name. Now there's bound to be a few of you that say, well Belinda, hang on, what about the 1,4-dioxane that can be produced through the ethoxylation process? Just remember that cosmetics must comply with the regulations and limits of 1,4-dioxane, knowing that it can be an impurity as part of the ethoxylation process. These materials are vacuum stripped to remove the 1,4-dioxane and ensure that it remains below the 10 part per million 1,4-dioxane limit stipulated in the EU Cosmetic Regulations Annex 2, Entry 343. In other words, it's perfectly safe and completely natural. And well done to Croda 2, who are also using a bioethylene oxide to replace some more synthetic origin materials. As you can see, they use a similar processing approach using sugarcane or biomass materials in place of crude oil distillation and gas processing. The end result is chemically identical and perfectly safe but the inky name would otherwise lead you to exclude it from otherwise perfectly suitable formulations. So let's take a look at a couple of other examples where the inky name might be off-putting, but we shouldn't disclude the ingredient because they're also 100% natural. Let's talk about alkanes. Now, chemically speaking, an alkane is just a way of describing a hydrocarbon chain. Now some great places that we can source hydrocarbon chains is from crude oil or from palm oil and coconut oil in particular. Why does coconut and palm get used so often? Because they have very short hydrocarbon chains. 
which means we can cleave off the glycerin, which we can also use either as glycerin or in other processing steps, but we can also use the short chain alkanes to produce either materials on their own or use them in further processing also. One example is the Emmergreen series of materials, which are C15, C19 alkanes, all sourced from plant materials. They use palm kernel oil and then put that material through hydrogenation and distillation to produce their Emo Green range. What this produces is beautifully light, sensorially pleasing emollients, but with an inky name of C1519 alkane. So again, it would normally be discluded as a synthetic material because the inky doesn't necessarily mean it's from that origin it conforms to the correct inky designation of C1519 alkane, regardless of where it was sourced. In this case, they're 100% naturally derived. Let's take a look now at a fantastic material, Lexville Wow. Now this is quite a unique material because it is quite volatile, but again, 100% plant sourced. The issue, again, is with its inky name triheptanoin and C1315 alkane. The triheptanoin comes from the glycerin from coconut oil and the heptanoic acid from castor oil. These are then esterified to produce triheptanoin and of course they use C13 to 15 alkanes from coconut oil. The end result is a beautifully light, partially volatile emollient that's fantastic in skincare and hair care formulas but has an inky name that might otherwise put a few people off. The end material is of course 100% naturally derived and 100% safe. And finally, some very clever chemistry from my good friends at Grant Industries. They've created Grand Sense Elastomers, which are a pure sensory delight. They obtain dilinoleic acid from pine trees and propane diol from corn, and combine this with a naturally derived urethane from biofermentation of plant-based feedstock to produce polyurethane 100, which is an elastomer network made from these bio-based sources with incredible sensory feeling for truly innovative and unique feeling products. With an inky name like polyurethane 100, a lot of consumers would assume it's not natural but I can guarantee you from this processing, it is 100% bio-based and perfectly safe for you to use. Now, of course, it is a problem for some organic certifiers who have previously ruled out the use of sulfation or ethoxylation as part of their organic rules. But the materials are 100% bio-based and have a fantastic carbon footprint. So they'll need to reconsider those rules based on inky names alone. It's time for consumers to do the same. We shouldn't just assume that an ingredient is not safe or suitable because of its inky name. We certainly shouldn't assume that it's not natural based on that inky name either. I hope that this video has shown you just how innovative and exciting this industry can be, especially the raw material suppliers that are stepping up to the call for more bio-based, carbon neutral and renewable sources of raw materials. So don't just look at an inky and make assumptions, look at the material itself and its sourcing before making your decision. Remember, all ingredients used in cosmetic products are safe when used within their regulatory limits. And if there's any issues or safety concerns, the ingredients and the products are quickly withdrawn from the market by the regulators to ensure consumer safety. So don't judge an ingredient by its inky name and get back to enjoying your amazing personal care products and using these innovative materials to create beautifully performing and inspiring personal care products. I hope you've enjoyed this video and can now see how inky can get it wrong. And I'm sure we're gonna see loads more examples in the coming years based on this very clever chemistry. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.